might find a peculiar architectural feature, niches or alcoves built into the wall. At first it might not seem so strange, but that is until you learn about the idea of coffin corners. Look up the stairs. Do you see a niche for the second floor landing? You may have heard that these niches were built for a very dark purpose, to move coffins up and down stairs. Well, somewhat. It is true that many bedrooms were on the upper floors and many people did die at home, sometimes in their bedrooms. So the thinking goes that people needed to bring a body in the coffin down the difficult winding staircase. But let's use some common sense. Why would you bring a coffin all the way upstairs, put a dead body in it, making it heavier, and then struggle to bring it downstairs when you could just take the dead body downstairs and put it in a coffin then? We also know that this would have been a more practical solution since funerals in the home were usually held downstairs in the parlor rooms and never upstairs. Niches could have taken on an unintended purpose, just like we sometimes use design features in our own homes for things other than they were meant to be for. Perhaps these niches could have been used to help people carry large objects, like coffins, up and down staircases, allowing them to pivot. Pivot! <laughs> pivot! It's probably not what their habitual purpose was. In 1848, William Makepeace Thackeray's narrator in Vanity Fair describes undertakers using a window for a makeshift purpose. As you ascend the staircase of your house from the drawing towards the bedroom floors, you may have remarked a little arch in the wall right before you, which at once gives light to the stair which leads from the second story to the third and serves as a purpose of utility, of which the undertaker's men can give you a notion. They rest the coffins upon that arch or pass them through it so as not to disturb any unseemly manner the cold tenant slumbering within the black arch. So we know that niches were just an architectural design because we can date them back to the Builder's Dictionary, which was written in 1808, which is just a dictionary with a bunch of architectural and builder slang from the 19th century. It included words such as a little round molding, sometimes carved and enriched with foliage, curls, ribbons, laurels, etc. Two strong braces or struts which stand under a breast summer, meeting at an angle upon the shoulder of a king piece. Used to signify those fanciful ornaments of animals, interspersed among foliages, fruit, etc. Niches or hollows, left in walls for images, figures, or statues to stand in. 